Right, let's check how do we use the diagram to solve the problems that we have here on trigonometry. Remember you're given that 13 sine alpha minus five is equal to zero. What is sine theta? Sine theta, is, uh, these are ratios. In other words, to, for me to get it, to understand where, what is sine theta definitions, I've got to know, I've got to put it into a fraction form, something over something. Because we know that sine is opposite of hypotenuse, cos is something over something, tan is something, so it is a ratio, something over something. No matter what you say, but you need to put it back into its original state where it is sine alpha is equal to something over something. In this case, tan beta is equal to something over something. Look at this one. It's smooth, they've given us right. Tan beta, it is something over something. There's nothing stopping the examiner from saying, taking four this side and say four tan beta, and take three this side and say plus three is equal to zero. There's nothing stopping the examiner from putting it in this form. So it is up to me as, as a learner, put it in what I, these are ratios. Something is equal to something over something. I've got to put it in that form. It can, we confuse in this form, but no one will to funai. This is the form that we want. It is okay this side. This one is not okay, so I've got to work it out. Before it was this, what was it? Because I'm dealing with alpha here. There are two things here. There is alpha and there is beta. So it means that I've got to use two diagrams because these are two different angles. Let's start with this one first. What is it, what is it that I need to, to, to do on this one? Let me isolate to find alpha. So find alpha will be equal to, we take this part, that side, it will be five, then we divide by 13. This is what we have. 5 over 13. So sine alpha is equal to 5 over 13. I can not, now I know the definition that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I know which one is opposite, which one is, op is, is hypotenuse now. So sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse in that diagram. Remember that the opposite and hypotenuse only works in a right angle triangle. So it means that I've got to have a diagram. I must have my diagram. Then you go to your Cartesian plane, your cast diagram. Cast diagram, T-A-S-T. -T. This is what we refer to as the cast diagram. What is this saying to me? It says that all ratios are positive in this first quadrant. In the second quadrant, only sine and its reciprocal is positive. On the third quadrant, only tan and cot is positive. On the fourth quadrant, only cos and its re reciprocal are positive. Right. Who sign to positive? Who positive? Who positive? Who positive? Who sign? Who positive? Who sign? Who first quadrant? Now the second quadrant. So our, our diagram, we might sketch it on the first quadrant or the second quadrant. We're not sure. Because that is where sign is positive. It is positive in these two quadrants. But we can't have our sketch in two quadrants. I need to know exactly where to, where to sketch this. Now that is where this comes in handy. We call this the interval. It tells me exactly where alpha is. Now when I look at this, remember this is zero or 360. This is what? This is 90, this is 180, and this is 270. Now this is telling me where alpha is. It says alpha is an element, or alpha is, is between 90 and 270. It tells me exactly. Alpha is between 90 and 270, between 90 and 270. It is either in this quadrant or in this quadrant. It says alpha is between 90 and 270. Between 90 and 270. So it's either in this quadrant and this quadrant. The first one said sine is positive. Sine is positive in this quadrant and this quadrant. Now you check where do we have more ticks. We have more ticks on the second quadrant. That's where we put the diagram. So our diagram, we're going to put it on the second quadrant. Because that is where we have got more ticks. Let's do this again. We've got more ticks on the second quadrant. This is where my alpha will be in the second quadrant. Right. <clears throat> what is it that we have? Sine alpha is so opposite over hypotenuse. So what is opposite here? Opposite is 5 over hypotenuse, which is 13. Right. We've got to find the other side. We don't have the other side. Look at the question here. It's talking about cos, ka, ka, adjacent. So it will need this side, which is the adjacent side. Remember, this should be positive because sine is positive on the second quadrant. Right. What is it that we have here? Look, this or x la or x la x la but negative. Therefore, the solution that I will get here must be negative. That is important. We should know that in the second quadrant, x is negative but y is positive. So whatever value I get here, I should know that it should be negative. But how do I find it? I use the theorem of Pythagoras because I've got a right angle triangle. 
the Trinity theorem of Pythagoras, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. It means that when I'm working this thing out, I will have u, 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 u x1, u x squared plus u y squared is equal to 13 squared. I'm using, uh, I'm looking for x. So my x squared is equal to 13 squared minus, what is my y? It is 5, so it is 5 squared. Let me just check what is 13 squared. 13 times 13, I think it's, uh, let me just confirm it's 13 times 13. It is 169 minus 25. It will give me 144, which is 12. Yes, it's 5, 13, 12, triple. So in other words, my x is equals to uh, square root plus or minus square root of 144. But x will give me, we know that x on is negative, so it will be minus 12. I'm only taking the negative solution, not the positive one, because I'm dealing with the second quarter. If my diagram was this side, I was, go I was going to use a positive 12. So we take our x as minus 12, because it is negative in that quadrant. Right, let's look at what we need to do here. It's for three marks. We need to find the cosine of alpha. The angle is alpha. I use the diagram, which is alpha, not the one with beta, because I'm still using alpha in this particular case. So cos alpha, what is the definition of cos? Cos is adjacent of hypotenuse. I use the diagram. Remember, this side is opposite. This side is adjacent. This side is hypotenuse. Now, I know the value of x now. It is minus 12. Once you've got the, the dimensions of, the, of your triangle, life becomes easier. Let's, let's do this. This then becomes cos alpha ka ka adjacent. Adjacent is minus 12. Ka 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 adjacent over hypotenuse over 13. This is the answer. Now, check your answer. We're talking about what? Cos. Where is the diagram? In the second quadrant. How is cos in the second quadrant? It should be negative. Definitely show that when I'm talking about cos here, I must get a negative solution. Hence, I've got a negative solution. If we're dealing with sine in this, in this quadrant, I was going to get a positive solution. But other ratios, cos and tan in the second quadrant, definitely going to get a negative solution because that is where cos is negative. Right, let's move on to the next one where we are given two, 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 two angles, both alpha and beta. I do have the, 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 the triangle for alpha, but I don't have the one for beta. So it is important that I should also cater for it. Right. It's a good exercise because it gives us two different angles that we work with. Don't, don't put them in one diagram. Remember, this was for alpha. I've got to find the one for beta. But as I look at this, as I look at this, something should click. Right. This is cos ah, alpha plus beta. Cos alpha plus it's the same thing. It crops out everywhere. So this become my tool to be able to understand this. What section is this? It is called a uh, compound angle. The compound angle gabale, the cos. Itini rhythm ga cos, itini, cos, cos, chain sign, gobu cos. Cos, cos, chain sign, sign, sign. Cos, cos, sign, sign. Let's write it down. So this will then be equals to uh, cos alpha, cos alpha, cos beta. Change this sign, it's minus. Cos, cos, sine, sine. Sine alpha, sine beta. This is what we're looking for. This is what we have. Remember, it started as, as two angles, and I see that this is compound angles, so I know the rhythm cos, 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 change sign, sine, sine. So that's what I have. You only write what you know. Let's move on. All right. Let's look at what we have here. Let's, have, let's complete our diagram so that everything we need will be there. Okay. Let me look at tan. I'm given that tan beta is equal to a particular number. How is this number that we have here? It is negative. Tan beta is equal to minus 3 over 4. I ask myself this question. I've got tan that is negative. Where is tan negative? The cast diagram again. All stops to Chatsworth. Right. I understand what this means. All ratios are positive here. Sine is positive here. Cos tan is positive here, and in the fourth quadrant, cos and its reciprocal is positive. Right, let's push in this diagram. Where do you put the diagram? We know that tan is negative in which quadrant? Tan is positive there, tan is positive here. So it is negative in this quadrant and also in that quadrant. That is what, what this is telling me. It is telling me that 
turn the diagram might be in this quadrant or it might be in the fourth quadrant. It might be in the second quadrant or the fourth quadrant. But I need to know exactly where it is. I go to the interval. It will direct me exactly where to put the diagram. What is this interval saying? It is saying that upita upagati uwa 90 no 270. Where is my 90? Oh, it's the same thing there. This is 90, this is 180, this is 270, and 30 plus 6. I, 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 so it's between these two quadrants. Might be in this quadrant or that quadrant. Ah, I can see now where exactly to put my diagram. Where I've got more ticks. I've got only one there, one there, but two there. That, that's where I will put my diagram, in the second quadrant. Right, I'm happy. I know exactly where to put my diagram. And it should be a right angle triangle. Because this type of trigonometry that we are doing now, it's happening within a right angle triangle. We'll move on to those that are not working in a right angle triangle in, in our next lesson. Right, let's push in the dimensions now. Tan is negative. Towa, towa, this is opposite. This is adjacent. So definitions become very important. This is soccer towa, so tan is opposite over adjacent. So tan is opposite over adjacent. So this stands for opposite, this one stands for adjacent. So this is where my alpha is. Oh, it's beta this time. I'm dealing with beta. Beta. We know that tan of it, tan beta is towa opposite. Ah, it's, remember this one is negative. So towa. So this is three over four. And this four must be negative. So that's why we've got a negative solution there. So positive divided by negative, it is negative, which is, which is, it is fine. So that's what we have. This one makes life easier. This is three, this is four. What should be hypotenuse? It is five, the three, four, five, triple. So five squared is equal to three squared uh, plus minus four squared. It will, it will balance out. The square on the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So that's what we've got. Now we've got all these dimensions. Our it makes our lives easier. We can answer any question. Now let's do this thing. Cos alpha. When they talk about alpha, I go to the diagram the alpha. When they talk about beta, I go to the diagram the beta. Fortunately for me, I also don't forget what I've just found. I know what is cos alpha. So when they ask me for cos alpha, I just take this and push it in here, which is minus 12 over 13. Or just use the diagram. I'll get the same thing. Cos beta, I go to the beta diagram. Am I not given what cos beta is? I'm not given. I'm only given tan, and I've calculated cos. So let me just find what is cos beta. What is cos beta? Ka, 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 adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be minus 4 over 5. Minus. Go to sine now. Sine alpha. Do I have sine alpha? Yes, I got it here. Sine alpha is 5 over 13. So it's minus sine alpha. I check it. So, 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 opposite over hypotenuse. So is opposite over hypotenuse. I've already calculated there. So, but sine is opposite over hypotenuse, which is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 5 over 13. I multiply this with this next one. Sine beta. I go to beta now. So is opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, it's going to be 3 times 5. Oh, 3 over 5. So opposite over hypotenuse. 3 over 5. Let's see what we have here. Let me just quickly check this one. Uh, this then becomes, what is minus times minus going to be positive? Or 12 power 4, I think it's 48, 24, 48. Yes, it is 48 over, what is 13 minus 5? In fact, in other words, you just take your calculator, you push it all this, it will give you the answer. Uh, 48, 13 times 5, what does it give us? 65 minus I, Using our eyes is important. I don't have to redo this one. Because I see this 13 times 5, this is 13 times 5. So it's all over 65 as well. What is 5 times 3? It is going to be uh, 15. Then 48 minus 15, they are all over 65. So both of them are over 65. Uh, 48 minus 15, uh, 48 minus 15, it is equals to 33. Let me just check it. I do it in this way, 4 minus 1. It is 3, 8 minus 5, it is 3. Yes, it is 33 over 65. Right, this is how, what you do when you are using a diagram. Make sure that you put it on the correct quadrant. This will help you because sine is positive. Also, you use this in conjunction with the intervals to know exactly where to do your diagram. Thank you.